Anyways, in the previous class, we did look at um, a partial increase in control, right? Whereby a subsidiary was buying an additional interest from, from the non-controlling interest, right? So in that regard, we did mention that when the subsidiary uh, when so when the holding company is buying an additional interest from non-controlling interest, right? Uh, we have a new leg that we call changes in ownership, right? And changes in ownership, we said it was the difference between the amount that is being paid, right, by the uh, by the holding company minus the portion that is lost by the non-controlling interest. So we call this the changes in ownership. Right, then we did process a journal for changes in ownership and I showed you guys where do we disclose the changes in ownership reserve in the system of changes in equity and all that. All right, so in today's class, we want to look at a scenario whereby there's a partial disposal of an interest in an existing subsidiary. So in other words, the holding company is selling a part of its investment. Right. So of course your tutorial letter is good, but they do not have enough like in terms of clarification uh, they do not have enough clarification and examples to describe these changes in ownership right um but of course you can then look at the questions from your tutorial later there right so what happens right with regards to uh this scenario there's a few things that i want you guys to pay attention when there is partial disposal of an interest right? so in other words uh, the, the, the holding company is actually selling a portion of its interest. All right. So um, in terms of this, partial disposal of an interest. Right. Ah, so in this case, decrease in control. Now, there's a few things that I want you guys to understand. So one, in the separate books, right? In the separate books, this holding company will calculate gain or loss on disposal. So in their separate books, the holding company is going to say, all right, selling price minus original purchase price. of the interest, right? This is what's going to give them the gain or the loss on the partial disposal, right? That is the first thing. But at group level, we need to eliminate this gain or loss, right? Um, so at group level, we said no. Um, remember the holding company and the, um, and the and controlling interest, they're still part of the same company, All right? So the holding company and the subsidiary, I mean, because you have control, so you can't recognize this, uh, this game. So we need to eliminate it, All right? And then two, right? Uh, with this regard, we need now, since the holding company, the holding company is losing part of its interest. Right, to NCI. It is losing part of its interest to NCI, all right? The difference is recognized as change in ownership. So we have changes in ownership in two circumstances, all right? So we have change in ownership when there is an increase in control and we have change in ownership when there is a loss of control. Uh, sorry, a, a decrease in control. All right, let's quickly uh, look at that part. All right, so um, a subsidiary, the main subsidiary with the parent holding a smaller interest. All right, in this case, it is important to realize there's no change in status. The subsidiary means a subsidiary only with the parent company holding smaller interest. The parent will recognize profit or loss on the disposal <clears throat> of the investment in its separate financial statements. The following steps are taken. The profit or loss on disposal that was recognized in the parent's separate financial statements will be reversed upon consolidation. 
All right, the difference between the amount that the non-controlling interests are adjusted by and the consider consideration received by the parent of disposal must be recognized directly in change in ownership reserve. No gain or loss should be recognized in the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. The total amount of good that arose at acquisition is not adjusted. I'm sure you saw in the previous class where we said whether you acquire new shares, all right, or um, you whether you acquire new shares, all right, uh, with control, you still remain with control, or whether you dispose some of your shareholding, but you still remain with control. It does not affect goodwill that you present in the state of financial position. All right. Of course, there'll be an allocation of goodwill, all right, in regards to this, all right, um, if there is a decrease in control, part of the goodwill that was entitled to the holding company will be allocated to non-controlling interest if we're using the fair value method. All right, so let's quickly look at it, all right, so that we can see what's going on in this regard. All right, I'm just gonna quickly uh, go to the required all right i'm gonna i'm going to do part b all right remember in the previous class we looked at net asset at acquisition all right we use the proportionate method so in this one i want us to look at um the fair value method where we have the part b so the group elected to measure non-controlling interest in an acquiry at fair value all right so that's the first thing class example all right nci measured it Fair value. All right, let's quickly look at it. <clears throat> so prepare the pro forma consolidation journal entries for the Rose Limited Group for the year ended 20 February 2017. Provide only the journal entries for part B that is different from part A. <clears throat> then prepare the consolidated similar profit and loss and other comprehensive income for the Rose Limited Group for the year ended 20 February 2017. Prepare the consolidated statement of changes in equity, the Rose Limited Group, all right, for the year ended 20 February 2017. All right, and then the last part, he says, prepare, um, the last part, prepare the statement of financial position of the Rose Limited Group. All right, let's quickly look at it. So just a small example, all right? Decrease in holding, all right? So there is the following are the trial balances of Rose Limited and Petro Limited for the year ended 20 February, 2017. All right, additional information. On 1st of March, 2014, Rose acquired control of Petro by acquiring 40,000 of the issued owner shares in Petro for 60,000. On 1st of March, 2014, the returned earnings of Petro amounted to 20,000 and the assets and liabilities in the separate financial segment of beta were fairly valued except for the following items. Lent trade receivables. The market price of one beta limited, uh, one beta limited share was 1.55 on 1st of March, 2014. On 20 February, 2017, Rose sold 10,000 shares in beta to the non-controlling interest for 17,500. After the disposal, Rose still controlled PETA. The sales transaction and the taxation payable on the self shares were correctly accounted for by Rose Limited in its separate accounting records. Rose Limited recognized the equity investment in the subsidiary PETA Limited in separate accounting records using the cost price method. In both companies, each share carries one vote and the issued share capital has remained unchanged since. March 2014, the South African normal tax rate is 20% and the capital gains tax rate is 80% thereof. All right, so let's look at it. Uh, the income and expenses of PETA were accrued evenly during 2017. So the first part, they want us to prepare the pro forma consolidation journal entries. All right, let's do the journal entries first. All right, so pro forma. Consolidation job entry. Right. So let's start off with the first journal. So first journal, of course, we need to process the transaction on the acquisition debt. 
So these are the transaction that we're sitting with on the acquisition debt. Do you see there is land? All right, do you see the carrying amount of land is one of uh, the fair value of land is one of three, but the carrying amount is 95. So the value of the land went up. So we need to process a value where we increase the land. So we have to debit land, or you can debit this property land and equipment uh, that is still fine. All right, with how much? So it's one of three minus. 103 minus 95,000, right? So we are saying the value of the land. Remember, we said on acquisition debt, everything is measured at fair value. So we have increased the value of the land to this balance. Right? So land, the value of the land is, is going up. Right, then we credit revaluation surplus. Right? We have created a revaluation surplus. So you can take it to statement of change in equity, SFP, or you can take it to statement of financial position. So the choice is yours in terms of this. Revaluation is recorded in statement of change in equity, as well as the statement of financial position. Then you have deferred tax, all right, SFP. How much will be your deferred tax? 8,000 times, remember this is land. The carrying amount of land is realized through sell. Hence, we use the CGT rate of 80%. Of course, if this is an old example, tax was still sitting at 80% there. All right. So in this regard, so you land, whenever you see land, the different tax on land is accounted for at 80% because the carrying amount is realized through sell. All right. Then, of course, you do a calculation like that. Right, so that this is uh, in this regard revaluation of land and the acquisition debt. One acquisition. Right, so you have revalued your land of this debt. Then you do journal two. So journal two, you have your other asset as well, trade receivables. Do you see the trade receivables? Um, so in terms of this, uh, of course. They have a value there. The carrying amount, the fair value is less than carrying amount. So there's literally an impairment on trade receivables. All right, so what do we do in this regard? Now, when you see current assets, all right, the revaluation of current assets will move it to retained earnings. Why? Because we expect to realize them within 12 months. All right, so we debit retained earnings. All right. Retained earnings, SFP. Then also debit deferred tax, All right? SFP. Then um, in that regard, we then have to credit the trade receivables. All right? Trade receivables, SFP, All right? With how much? So in terms of this, the trade receivables is 23 minus 18, the value went down there. All right, so in this case, this is what they'll give us, our balance there. So we're sitting the 5,000 there. Then the deferred tax, this is not land. All right, so in this case, we multiply just by 20%. Right? So the deferred tax in this case, it will be 5,000 times 20%, I believe, you, this is something that you know from your undergrad, right? But if you forgot, this is a quick recap, all right? Now, whilst we're still on the retained earnings, all right? So this is a revaluation, of course, of trade receivables. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this journal, all right? Now, this transaction took place in 20. 15, year 2015, all right? Year ending 2015. Now, these trade receivables in 2016, you expect to have collected all your money, all right? Why? Because trade receivables are current assets. You expect them to be realized within 12 months. So what do we do? We then have to reverse this journal entry, all right? So the amount that we say the impairment needs to be reversed because and the trade receivables has settled. So you then debit trade receivables. 
SFP, all right, with the 5,000 that we initially uh, processed them. All right, and then, um, of course, after that, you then have your retained earnings. Then you credit deferred tax. So you just you're just simply reversing the journal that you initially processed there. All right. So in terms of this, uh, so you have retained earnings three six hundred, and then one one. So you process this journal when you have current assets. All right, I'll be with you just now. So even if the revaluation was with regards to inventory, you're going to do the same journal. So the trade receivables have settled. So in other words, you're saying, no, this loss, the impairment loss we had in our accounting records, let's reverse it. In other words, let's remove it from the accounting records. All right, yes, you can. Good day, everyone. Good day, Mr. Kenneth. Good day, yes, sir. Hello. Hello, yes, we can hear you. I would like to ask, would you use the same multiple principle when you I just wait. I can't really hear you. I'm not sure if you're too close to the mouthpiece or because uh, the words are not really coming out. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, okay, let's try it. Yeah, I was asking, uh, the same, we we'll use the same principle when we are dealing with the trade table. Yes, 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 yes. Trend payables are realized within 12 months as well. Yes, you do the same principle. Oh, but of okay. course, it will be, yes. Um, so in this case, yes, you do. But I've never seen the case where the trend payables are actually, um, because remember, we don't provide an allowance for credit loss on trend payables. I'm sure you know that, right? It's it's one of those things where you say, uh, I'm not expecting to pay my payables. You know what I mean? So you can't create that provision to say, I'm not expecting to pay my payables. But but yes, if if it so happened that they provided that way, you do the same. But I've never seen that type of example. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right, cool. Uh, so in this case, it's a reversal of trade uh, receivable evaluation. Okay. Cool. But anyways, this principle applies on all current assets and current liabilities there. So we move the current assets and current liabilities to retained earnings. All right. Um, basically, that's that's what we have. And then let's look at the other journals during the acquisition debt. All right. What do we need to do? We need to do the main elimination journal entry. All right. Let's look at it. How do we go about it? So you need to debit the share capital, the retained earnings, the revaluations, right? and then, uh, of course, we credit NCI and um, investment. So journal, oh, we call it the main elimination journal entry. So we debit share capital, SFP. Right? What was the share capital balance on the acquisition debt, right? Uh, so in terms of this, uh, we can see the share capital is sitting at 50,000, right? So we're just gonna debit 50,000 as the share capital there, them, right? And then we also debit retained earnings, right? So in terms of this, the retained earnings on the acquisition debt was sitting at how much? So we had retained earnings of 20,000 there, right? So the retained earnings is 20,000, right? So now, but now what we need to do now is, of course our retained earnings is sitting at 20,000, but look, you see, there is the 3.6, this is on the acquisition debt. So there's also another 3.6, which we need to, to deduct. With. So we're gonna take 20,000 minus the 3.6, which is coming from trade receivables. Right, so the net balance for ten earnings on the acquisition debt will be this. Right, what about this? So probably you're asking yourself, what about the three point six? The reversal takes place at the end of the following year. So in regards to this, remember, we said trade receiver will expect to realize them within twelve months, but now on acquisition debt they have not paid us, so we wait until the end of the 12-month period, which is, of course, at the end of the following year. 
So that's when you process the reversal journal entry then. All right, and then we have a revaluation surplus with regards to land. So we revalued our land. So there, there was a revaluation of the land, which is sitting at 1608. Right, so land was, was revalued there. Right, then after that, we then do a journal. You can skip a line, you do investment in subsidiary. Right, so this is the guardian of the subsidiary. How much did you pay to acquire this subsidiary? So we paid, so in terms of this, right, you can see for 60,000. So we paid 60,000 there. All right, so the investment is sitting at 60,000. So that's the amount that we paid. The non-controlling interest. Right? SFP. Now we said NCI is measured at fair value. Right? Of course, there are two examples there, but we said non-controlling interest, we're going to measure it at fair value. Right. Now, what does it mean? So it means we take the fair value of the NCI. You see, each share was trading at 155. So we're gonna take 1.55 times the number of shares allocated to NCI. How many shares did you allocate to NCI? You see, there's 50,000 ordinary shares, right? Not this, you use here, the number of shares that they have, they're 50,000. The holding company bought 14, which means NCI is 10,000, right? 50 minus 40 gives you 10,000. So NCI is sitting at 10,000 shares. You know? So in this regard, which means now you have 1.55 times 10. So that's what it give you, your NCI. Any questions, guys? Then you net off your balances. You know? So here it gives you 75.5, and then here it gives you 72, which means there's goodwill, right? SFP. Right, so you have um, 75, 500 minus this side gives us how much? 72608. Right, so of course, you just said the difference between this plus this, right? Minus this, minus this, minus this. So that's what it gives us. Good. So our good we sitting at this amount. All right. So that's uh that's what we have as part of our um um journal entry. Then we look at the subsequent journal entries. All right. In regards to uh to this transaction. All right. Let's quickly look at the subsequent journal entries. Journal. Five, all right? So you can do a journal for dividends. If there were dividends, right, of course, in this example, there was there was no dividend, right? But if there was a dividend, you do that journal where you allocate your dividend to, to, to non-controlling interest in the, in the main company. So you debit other income, p and right? If there was a dividend declared, then you debit non-controlling interest. Right, SFP, right, then you credit dividend declared or paid instead of changes in equity, right? So in this case, process it like that. But of course, in this question, we don't have dividends, so that's fine. Then journal six, what is journal six about? You now need to allocate your retained earnings, right? You need to process a journal where you allocate your retained earnings to non-controlling interest. So you debit retained earnings. This is at the beginning of the year, right? So retained earnings, SFP, or standard of change in equity is fine. Then you have non-controlling interest. Right? SFP. So you look here at the opening balance right, of your retain earnings, right? Then you take a portion of it to, to non-controlling 
interest. So let's quickly look at it. What is the opening balance of retained earnings? So they gave you retained earnings on 1st of March. Do you see 75,000? That's your opening balance, All right? So you can take the 75,000 minus, minus what? The retained earnings balance on the acquisition debt. All right. So in terms of the uh, the acquisition debt, what did you have as part of your as part of your retained earnings? All right. Do you see? So on the acquisition debt, all right. Um, they had those sitting at retained earnings balance, which was um twenty thousand. All right. They bought this company with the retained earnings balance of twenty thousand. All right. So you have it. Minus 20,000, all right? Then, do you see subsequently, in terms of the returned earnings, you have the reversal of this impairment. So you then have to add the reversal of the impairment, which is 3,600 then. Right, then you multiply, all right? So any share is entitled to 10,000 shares, 10 out of 50. So you can say one out of five times 100, it gives you 20%. Right, so in this case, that's what they'll give you your apportionment there. Right, so it takes us to to this amount. So that's the amount that you you allocate for not controlling interest. Then the next part, of course, <clears throat> you need to allocate your profit. For the current year to not control an interest, but because there's a change, it might be a little bit difficult for us to do the allocation there. All right, so let's now quickly look at uh, maybe we can do the um, analysis of owner's equity, you know, so that we can see how much we, we are losing there. All right, just one minute. Uh, whilst you guys attempt this, let's look at it. Analysis of owner's equity. All right, so we want to do analysis of owner's equity. Right, analysis of owner's equity. All right, so in terms of this, uh, we're sitting now with our company, uh, whereby we saw now the company is actually selling part of its interest. All right, they're selling uh, a portion of its interest, of course. So we want to prepare the analysis of owner's equity. Let's see how we can go about that. All right. So uh, we have, of course, total and since and all that. So we have the total at since, then NCI. You know, so these are the columns that we're sitting with. All right. It does to our question there. So let's quickly look at it, all right, so that we can see. So we have the share capital on the acquisition. So this is at acquisition, all right? So we have share capital. All right, how much is the share capital? We've already processed everything on that journal that we processed here, the main elimination journal. So we saw the share capital is 50,000, retained earnings was that. All right, so I'm just gonna say retained earnings, Right. And then we have revaluation surplus. We have already done the calculation for this stage. Right. So I'm just going to take um, the share capital balance, which is this amount. All right. And then, of course, I'm just going to put through the rest there. All right. Then you can choose. Right. So we saw here this is 100. Uh, so this is 80%. All right. Then you can say it's entitled to. 20% there. So you can choose to multiply each by 80%, but I prefer just doing the total. You guys are doing owners, right? Of course, you need to find ways to save time. So you can just say times 80%, right? You do this total. And then of course, the end slide, you just take this total times 20%. Gives you that, right? So this is your value. Then you look at consideration. Paid and NCI, all right? So we saw NCI, each share was trading at 1.55 times 10,000, all right? It gave us 
this, all right? And then them to acquire this investment, they paid an amount of 60,000. So we see doing 60,000 there. Right, then you can see um, we paid more than the value of the business, all right? They paid more than the value of the business, which means there is goodwill. So they paid more than the value of the business, hence there is an element of goodwill. Right? So if you, if we, even hence I paid more than the value of the business, there is also goodwill for that. Then you add together these amounts. Right, take you to, uh, to this balance. So this is what you have, all right, as part of your, your calculation. Then you move to sense acquisition. All right, I'm sure, remember, you have a limited amount of time. So you really, really need to make sure that you work as fast as possible. Then you have your retained earnings. All right, so in terms of the retained earnings, you take the balance at the beginning of the year. All right, so you return the earnings balance at the beginning of the year. They give you this 75,000. So you take 75,000 minus the returned earnings on the acquisition debt, which was uh, the 20,000. So you deduct the 20,000 there. Then you add, remember there was that returned earnings which was reversed. So you need to, to add it back. Right, so that amount, uh, which was for trade receivable, the three six, all right. Remember, this is now the current year. So then give you your balance. So you have seventy five thousand minus twenty thousand plus three six hundred. Right. Then you take you to uh, to this amount. Then you allocate it. All right. So you have the since column. So you have eighty percent of this amount. All right. And then there is twenty percent this amount so then take care there so that's your retained earnings amount then you look at the current year so profit for the year all right before self-interest all right so let's quickly look at it when did the self the interest to plus all right well, let's read them now on 20 February 2017, Rose sold 10,000 shares in Petro Limited to the non-controlling interest for 17,500. After the disposal, Rose Limited still controlled Petro. The sales transaction and the taxation payable on the sale of shares were correctly accounted for by Rose in its separate accounting records. So the sale is taking place on 20 February 2017. What is our year end? 20 February 2017. So there was no need to apportion the profit, all right? Why? Because the sale is taking place at the end of the year. Do you see? Unlike the example we did in the previous class, the sale was taking place somewhere within the year. But here, it's taking place at the end of the year, which means uh, Rose was entitled to 100% profit during this current year. All right, so we then have to look at profit for the year, all right? So... Um, profit for the year, All right? So in this case, so sell at year end. Hence profit not apportioned. All right, and like in the previous example, whereby the sale was taking place in the middle of the year, we had to, to apportion the profit. All right, let's quickly look at it. So what is the profit now of? Uh, of course, of Rose. All right. Um, so in terms of this, all right, um, quickly need to look at it. We can do now the calculation of, of the profit, all right, for this company. What is the profit? All right, so they gave us the profit before tax, do you see, of PETA, 85,000, before tax. So we need profit after tax. What is the tax? 23,800. So it's 85,000. Minus the taxation, which you say taxation is sitting at um, 23,800. If there were intra-group transaction, we're also going to, to, to deduct them. Assuming the subsidiary is the seller, we deduct those in unrealized profit there. All right. So we take our total, we'll be 
one two hundred. So in terms of the profit, right, that uh, they are sitting with, are uh, with one thousand two hundred there. Right. So that's that's the profit that we have, right, for the year. Oh, why is eight three coming? It's twenty twenty three eight hundred. Sorry. Right, then we allocate it times 80% for the full year. We're entitled to the full profit. This one times 20%. All right, this is what we have. Now, we now need to do the calculation, all right, of the total investment value, all right, upon the sale. Remember, they're selling their interest. So we now need to, uh, to process now the part of the sell. All right, so sell of shares now i want you guys to pay attention now in terms of this right remember when we're doing with proportionate method right when we're dealing with proportionate method uh we never really stressed much about the cell right we just allocated based on the um we took this portion which was for nci because it was proportionate but now because your goodwill is measured at best value, all right? We do the calculation a little bit interest, a little bit different, I mean. So let's look at um what is happening, all right? So there is transfer, right, of interest with no goodwill, all right? So we look at the value of the company without goodwill, right? What is the value of the business, all right, without so you take the 195, 300 minus, minus what? The goodwill amount. All right, so in terms of this, you see the goodwill is 2892. So you deduct the goodwill. All right. Then you multiply by. So how much interest did we lose? So they sold 10,000 shares in petrol. All right, so they are selling 20% of their interest. Right? So the so in this case, multiply by 20%. All right? This is the interest they are losing. Right. Also in this corner. So they are losing 195, 300 minus 2892 times 20%. So this is what they are losing. You see, 38. 481.6, which is roughly 38482. Then, in terms of goodwill, how much are we losing? Do you see? So, the goodwill, you look at the, the goodwill for the holding company, it's 1914. <clears throat> so, we are losing a portion of the 1914 times. Times what? 20, not 20%, but 20 out of. 80. Remember, this is not the whole company, but rather 80%. So it will say 20 over 80. This is the portion of good we are using. We use this method when you're dealing with proportionate method. Oh, sorry, with, when you're dealing with the fair value method. All right, so 19, 14 times 20 out of 80. So this is the portion of good that we actually use. So in total, how much are they losing? All right, so with regards to this, so how much are we transferring to uh, to the non-controlling interest? So in total, this is the percentage they are moving to, to NCI. All right, so NCI is getting 38916. So you move it to, to non-controlling interest. All right, so that's, that's that part there. Then you look at proceeds received. Right? Remember, we said change in ownership is the difference between the amount lost and the amount received. Let's quickly see how much did they receive in this regard. So uh, they disposed 10,000 for an amount of 17,500. So they received 17,500. No. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I thought it was a question. Right, so in terms of this, right, this is, so they're sitting in a loss position, right, of course, um, they sold for 17, 
500. All right, so that means they lost this value. All right, so if this amount will be positive, then the amount which is your interest will be negative. So this is what's going to, it's going, we are losing, all right? And then it's a gain for NCI. So it's a negative because we are losing, then it's a gain for NCI there. So, and then, so we are losing 21 for 16. So we call it changes in ownership. So it's a reserve account, which we're moving to the changes in ownership account there. So basically that is um, how we go about. Let's now process a journal entry, all right, in regards to, uh, to these changes in ownership, all right? But before we process a journal entry, I want you guys to take note, all right? Remember we mentioned now that um, non-controlling interest is gaining, all right, this shareholding. But the holding company, when they sell, this interest, all right? Uh, they're going to recognize what we call gain on sale, all right? In separate books, right? Holding company will record gain or loss on sale, all right? So in this case, we need to eliminate that. So what is the holding company going to record in this gain? Or loss on sell. So they're going to take proceeds. Proceeds received, so it's 17500 So they take 17500 minus purchase price. All right? Purchase. How much did they pay for that 20% in shares that they lost? So look, they paid an amount of 60000 What is that in here? 60,000, they paid an amount of 60,000, all right, to buy an 80% share holding, all right? So they paid 60,000 for an 80% share holding. So how much is 20 out of 80? Remember, they sold 20% out of the total of 80, all right? So in this regard, so in other words, they paid for this 20% 20 out of 8. So in other words, they paid 15,000. Then, we let it off like this. So this is the gain which they're going to record in their separate box. We need to eliminate that. So profit on sell. So they record a profit on sell. So we then come and say, now that is not correct. Let's process a journal. The journal entry seven. So in terms of this, all right, uh, we are going to debit, we debit investment in subsidiary. All right, so we debit investment in subsidiary SFP, all right, with how much? The initial amount that we paid to buy this investment. I believe this is something new. So we paid, we just did the calculation. Then we paid 20 out of 80 times 60,000. All right, that's what we paid, which gave us there, it was 15,000. So we debit that, right? Then we debit other income or profit on sale. All right, P and L. What you recognize in your separate books? Remember, in their separate books, we saw they recognize this two point five. So we have to, to record the two point five. I'm just going to call it calculation. Maybe let's call it calculation uh, I two. All right, and then so that in case maybe. When you're preparing for your exam, your mind will forget this, all right? Just say that we did it there. Then we'll call this one I1. So that's the part that we have. So we have our other income sitting like that. Then, all right, the next thing now is to credit non-controlling interest. Remember, NCI is gaining. So credit non-controlling interest, right, with the portion that they gained. How much did NCI gain? So NCI now gained, so you saw there, NCI is gaining in terms of the changes in ownership, all right? Um, so not change in ownership, but analysis of owner's equity. How much was transferred? It was 3.8, all right? So NCI gained the 3.8, all 
x60. Then the balancing amount is what you then record as changes in ownership. And also in terms of this deal, we have change in ownership. Right. So of course you can do it as a balancing or you can just pull it from this calculation. Remember you have the 21, all right? Or 60 as your changes in ownership. So this is the new journal entry, all right? Please remember this journal. It's quite important to my exam and you intro and the journal entries, right? So it's quite important that you understand in terms of this. All right. Then journal eight, it will be about um, profit allocated to non-controlling interest. So we're going to debit non-controlling interest. And uh, then you have non-controlling interest. SFP. So this is in regards to profit for the current year. How much was the profit for the current year? Of course, we did the calculation, but in case maybe you're running out of time and then you'd want to do analysis of what you said. If there's a quicker way of doing it, you take the profit before tax 85 minus the income tax, which is 23,800. So 85,000 minus 23,800 times 20%, which is your NCI percentage. So then give you, so we have 85,000, Minus 23,800 times 20%. Then take us to the amount. So these are the journal entries that you give and process. Right. Um, so basically, that's what you have. Please do look at the financial statements. Of course, the logic band that did not change from what we did in the previous class. Right. Look at the statement of property and loss. Look at the statement of changes in equity. You can also look at the statement of financial position. All right. So basically, that's what we have when we have a decrease in control. Any questions, guys? All right. Cool. So please look at this. Hi. Oh, yes, yes. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Uh, with regards to the revaluation surplus, mm. um, do we all like okay? Just uh, oh, the, you mean this one, or you mean yes, this, or this one for okay. land, oh, for, for land, yes. Um, so we don't always just assume that it goes to other comprehensive income, the marked market reserve. It no, must no. be stated the question. No, no, remember, no, a revaluation of land never goes to mark to market reserve. All right. What oh, goes to mark okay. to market reserve is revaluation in shares. All right. When you hold investment in oh. shares, that's what goes to mark to market reserve. Oh, okay. No, understood. All right. Cool. Another question, guys. Ah, cool. Um, so if you guys don't have questions, I can say, of course, um, this will be the end, right, of this class. So on Monday, all right, which I believe, of course, it's a holiday. If we agree, we might do class earlier uh, instead of doing it at uh, 17, uh, 1830. All right, we can do a class. I want to look at um loss of control, whereby subsidiary becomes a simple investment or possibly um, an associate, right? The, that will be the last part that we look at and then um, we'll see who we'll then have to do the related parties. Related parties are not difficult. I'll just share with you some notes there. All right, you can run through them and do a question together as well. Right, but otherwise, um, have a wonderful long weekend. Um, so guys, we're done. I'll see you on Monday. Then the rest I'll see you on text just now at 9 o'clock. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.